Brian O'Fallon with Haas Automation. I'm here today with Eric Wood. Eric's the engineering manager for the TL product line, and we're going to talk about the TL1 and the TL2 redesign. So Eric, you guys have redesigned the TL1 and 2 from the ground up, and one of the great things about the TL, it's always been a very popular model, and it's really kind of an entry-level machine. So for that shop that is a manual shop and they're transitioning into CNC, that's what this machine is targeted for, right? Yeah, they're very popular in the entry-level market. Uh, it's a great first step into CNC programming. Uh, we have the intuitive programming system that makes it even easier to transition from a manual to a CNC turning. Okay, so let's talk about the enclosure since it's the most visible thing. We took the enclosure and we completely redesigned it. It's fully integrated into the machine. Um, it does a great job at funneling the chips and coolant down into the base casting and then they flow out into the coolant tank and the, the way the base is now constructed, it's got a big tunnel, makes it really easy to rake out your chips. The other big difference I see is you got a huge amount of light in the machine now. That looks like an LED. Yeah, Haas is putting LED lights on all the products. You get great visibility of the workpiece and the operator now has a great view of what's going on while it's in automatic operation mode. Okay, so we've talked a lot about the enclosure. We mostly focus on the outside of the enclosure. When I was opening this door earlier, I noticed this bulkhead looks a lot different to me. Yeah, we've we pushed the bulkhead back, exposing the chuck better. We made sure the door opens really wide to give the operator great access for his chuck key. Ah, that is so he can swing it around, clamp and unclamp his parts. Okay, so there's no more interference between the chuck key and the bulkhead. That's correct. That's a big improvement. So while we're on the inside, another big change. This, this base is totally redesigned and it's really, it's a dramatic difference because the ball screw, which used to be back there, is now in the center of the linear guides. So in order to increase the performance of the machine, we move the ball screw in between the linear guides. We move the linear guides closer together, which gave the saddle a much more rigid stance. So now when you're driving your cutting tool into the workpiece, it, it drastically improves rigidity. So we're already talking about the inside of the machine. Can you talk about what you've done with the spindle? Well, basically, we gave the TL1 the TL2 spindle. The TL1 now has the same tall spindle height, large swing, and 826 spindle nose as the TL2. And of course, they both have the more powerful 12 horse vector drive. Okay, so now that I've got an 826 spindle nose in the TL1, that gives me a lot more work cooling options. So I can put an eight inch chuck or a 10 inch chuck on there now. That's correct, but we didn't stop there. We completely redesigned the spindle cartridge, going from a two bearing design to a more rugged three bearing design, which is very similar to what you'll find on the ST turning centers. Okay, well that's a huge improvement then. Now the TL1 has much more power. It's much more rigid because of the bearing design. I've got higher accelerations and decelerations, and all that ties in with a more rigid saddle. It's a much better machine. Very significant upgrade. So even though this particular machine has the manual tool post, I can still get an automatic turret for this machine, right? Of course, the four station tool changer is still available for shops doing production jobs. Okay, and the other thing is your coolant delivery. What I'm not seeing that I'm used to seeing on the old TLs is that hose that's draped in here. Yeah, that was a major focus for us. Uh, so we ran the coolant lines internally. They run right into the cross slide, so they move with the tool. And of course, the plumbing is all reconfigurable depending on how your tooling is set up. So I know you've made big changes to the tailstock. Can we come around the back of the machine and talk about that a little bit? Sure. So we basically incorporated the traditional iron on iron clamping system like you'd find on, a, on an engine lathe. And um, this gives us great clamping force while maintaining full adjustability. That's a big improvement from the old tailstock. Yes, it is. And while we're back here, let's talk about the coolant tank because the old pump was a little bitty pump and I think even the coolant tank itself was smaller, wasn't it? Yeah, we went from five gallons to 20 gallons. We increased the horsepower from one eighth to one quarter horsepower. So you've doubled your flow rate, you've got increased pressure and you've got much more capacity of the coolant itself. Yeah, and it works well with the new enclosure that keeps it all contained. Okay, so let's talk about the big issue, the hand wheels. The hand wheels are gone, and a lot of people had an emotional attachment to those. Talk a little bit about your decision to take those away. Yeah, that was a big decision. We knew uh, some people would be hung up on it. 
But basically, after talking to many shop owners and machinists, we found that the hand wheels were basically just used to move the saddle from back here close to the workpiece. And then from that point forward, they're using the control. And you address that with the control. This thing articulates and pivots and you can really get it right up to where you're working. Yeah, yeah, the access to the pendant is far better. You can reach the workpiece and the pendant at the same time. And the majority of the time, you're positioning the machine with the pulse generator right here, or as you can see, the remote jog handle. The other thing about the hand wheels that I notice is, number one, I don't have to worry about them spinning, so I have to stand back out of the way. And I feel like I'm getting a lot closer to my workpiece on the new TO. Exactly. Without the hand wheels in the way, we're able to bring the enclosure in allowing the operator to stand much closer to the workpiece, the spindle center. It's much more comfortable to work that It is way. much more comfortable. So now when I'm putting my part in or taking it out, I'm a lot closer to it. It makes my life a lot easier. Sure, easier on your operator. back. Yep. And as an added benefit, without that mass spinning around, we were able to drastically increase the max rapid rates and the max programmable feed rate. So how much faster is it? Uh, rapid rates got tripled. Wow. And the uh, max programmable rate went up by about two and a half times. That's a big change. Very drastic so, change. Let's talk about some things that you didn't change. Because right from the start, the TL had some benefits and some features that everybody loved. A couple examples is the IPS features. You guys didn't touch these, did you? Uh, like you said, the IPS system is the foundation of the tool room products. So we really didn't want to change it. There are many people out there already familiar with it and uh, it works really well. And, and really, again, going back to the beginning, transitioning from manual machining to CNC machining, this is a great tool for people to use. We really wanted to keep the spirit of the TL the same throughout all these design changes. Um, we wanted to keep it an open frame, approachable machine, makes a manual machinist feel very comfortable. But at the same time, we really wanted to bring some great performance improvements to it. And uh, I think we've accomplished that. I'd say you achieved that. Thanks for taking the time today, Eric. Absolutely, thanks, Brian.